Coming to get you. They're coming for you, Barbara. They're coming to get you. Coming to get you, Barbara. The podcast you're about to hear is an account of the tragedy which befell two youths, in particular Brent Terhune and his invalid co-host Gavin. <laughs> It is, all the, it is all the more tragic that they were young, but had they lived very, very long lives, they could have not expected nor would have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they did on that podcast episode. For them, <laughs> it was an idyllic summer afternoon podcast, which became a nightmare. The events of the day led to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Flashlight noise! Episode of They're Coming to Get You. <laughs> I said flashlight noise, even though it's clearly like a camera flash. So I just messed that up. Like, what's a flashlight noise? Well, and I... It's uh, also my one cat pretty much makes that noise for uh, <laughs> you're like you're like oh yeah. no big uh, big tcm fan your cat yeah. is well welcome to the coming to get you thanks for the uh, positive feedback on all those other episodes and some of that negative feedback you can stick it <laughs> listen we need new haters the old ones are starting to like us <laughs> uh but yeah welcome to the podcast my name is brent to i'm joined by Gavin Eddings, what's going on? Talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre today. One that I was excited to revisit because it's been a while since I watched it. And I've got the setting. Uh, I've set the, the scene here in my in my office uh, because I've got chicken bones and feathers, <laughs> uh, a skeleton from India because uh, it's cheaper to get it from India than to make your own. I have just turned on the heat in my house. We are recording this in the middle of June, but I just turned the heat on to get real sweaty, just real nasty. I'm also, I've hung some meat yeah, nearby meat. as well. So we're, so we're really getting that old chicken smell uh, uh, to really immerse you. I've got a lady tied up in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I've got grandpa sucking on my finger, you know, <laughs> as you do. Uh, so what is your, uh, what's your experience with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Gavin? I watched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre for the first time. For a lot of movies, I can't remember the exact time and place when I watched them. Mm -hmm. This one I do. It was 2003, right before the remake came out. Me, my sister, my mom went up to one of our friend, like family friend's house. They lived on a farmhouse in the Ooh. middle of nowhere. They had like one video rental store nearby and we're like, let's rent the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We watched it on a VHS. And I remember, uh, and, and we all spent the night there. And watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre in a farmhouse was terrifying. Just any noise outside was like, oh, it's, shit, it's Leatherface. He's coming. Yeah. He's coming <laughs> You're like, that's just an old coyote making that <laughs> noise. But I remember, so it has been honestly almost 20 years since I've watched this movie for, from beginning to end. Okay, that's a, that's a while. Yeah, it's been a while. And like you watch clips of it and like how it's an influential horror movie and things like that. But actually sitting down watching it from beginning to end. I've watched Friday the 13th, Halloween, Night Round Elm Street a bunch since then. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, I always forget about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's yeah, it's one of those where like you could be like a guy that wears a suit and goes to a nine to five corporate job, but you could still like Halloween. Yeah. But I feel like if and some of the listeners might take this wrong. If TCM <laughs> is your favorite movie, it's also a dirtbags movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like absolutely. If, if some guy outside of a gas station drinking Mountain Dew and smoking a cigarette with a Pantera shirt on was like, man, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that's my favorite. You'd be like, I have no doubt that is your favorite movie, you know? Toby Hooper made a masterpiece and I, he, he can't be touched. He, 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 he's, uh, he's one of the best, but uh, yeah, it's, but also I think you could just be a normal person and like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it's also, it is a little more extreme, maybe oh, even than the mm -hmm. exorcist, like the exorcist is, is kind of mainstream, you know, but honestly, I feel like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this original movie isn't as hardcore as the name suggests. It's actually very restrained when it comes to the violence and the gore. 
Well, and I, you know, and I'll, we'll talk about the facts and, and stuff that I've kind of gathered and in, in the research, but I know Toby Hooper was like his initial hope was to have this be a PG rated movie. <laughs> like poltergeist that you could just like, like take the kids to see. Yeah. You're like, Oh, you know, and honestly, I don't, I, I think, I think there's some swearing and stuff in it that is get that oh. bitch leather face, <laughs> get her, get her. <laughs> uh, but I think honestly today it probably would just be like maybe a PG 13, maybe a PG, but there's no way it's going to be a PG. Like, no, absolutely not. Like PG is what they give like toy story now. Yeah. Because like there's, you don't, there's no like hook going through the lady's back. But that's what's happening. Like they don't show it, but it's there, you know, like. Do you think um, this movie is more violent than Jaws? Um, yeah. You think and, so? and the thing is, I don't. I think it's it's like with Halloween where there's very little even blood. But if it's like they set it up, your brain goes there. Mm -hmm. because with Leatherface just running a chainsaw through the middle of Franklin, they don't necessarily <laughs> show that. But that's what's happening. But, in and, Jaws, but again, Jaws but, uh, is not my movie. Maybe this season we'll watch it. I'm not sure yeah. yet. But uh, I'll, I'd, I'd have to. That had to be fresh on my mind. I only I only ask because Jaws was PG. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I didn't just bring up Jaws to, to bring up Jaws. Jaws yeah. was PG rated, and you watch a man get eaten by a shark. Yeah. And, and, and a dude and a child's leg float to the bottom of the of the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, and you know, back then times were different. I think that there's like there was this wasn't going to be a PG rated movie back then, and definitely today, it's there's no way. Like, Absolutely not. No. But what was your experience with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Like, when do you remember the first time you watched it? I don't remember the year, but it's it was in the last 10 years because I always heard about this. And, it, you know, it's one of those that if you're a horror fan, you have to, like, see this at least once to say mm -hmm. that you've I, I, I was in a comedy condo in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I doubt illegally, I might add, downloaded this movie illegally because I'm a bad boy. <laughs> And if the if the feds are trying to get me, it's it, that's for comedy purposes. But uh, <laughs> I, I watched this on a, a laptop uh, in in Tulsa, as close as I could get to Texas, I guess. <laughs> what I love that sounds. <laughs> watching it in a co comedy condo is more terrifying than watching it in a farmhouse that, that I watched it. In. That's true. With just two other strangers, I don't I don't remember who was with me at the time, but uh, I remember watching this and being like, "This is shit." <laughs> this sucks so bad like it's such an assault on the senses this movie it's hot the movie's hot whether you <laughs> it's like like as, there are very few mu movies that could make you feel like as hot as this movie uh it's and not in the sexy way not in oh. the sexy way just like a sweaty very wet moist way the movie stinks the movie is hot and <laughs> It's loud. Even like you could have it on low. It's still loud. You know, mm -hmm. the things that happen in this movie. So I've watched this a bunch trying to make sense of why this is somebody's favorite movie. And the th it's really grown on me. Like, mm -hmm. I don't hate this movie anymore, but from the, and it could, it could have been a symptom of everybody's like, this is a great movie. Then you watch it. And it turns out it didn't live up to the expectations yeah over you know however many years but yeah that was my first time watching it and i was like i don't get this at all <laughs> um and then watching it i've probably seen it five or six seven times uh and i i don't hate it i like it um and i think it's well we can talk about it later but yeah i like it for me what what still sticks with me is you and i i think it's safe to say we're very indoor kids like, yeah. I don't want to go outside camping, but just seeing all these people outside walking through fields, sweating, like, mm -hmm. why would you even go to this shitty house to begin with? Yeah, well, like, the, this is a, the sun is out in this movie a lot. It's Texas. And like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if you would consider yourself a redhead, uh, but uh, I strawberry, am a, strawberry stra blonde. Strawberry. You're but you're a paler person, right? Yes, like, absolutely. I'm definitely pale. And anytime <laughs> like I could just get the residuals of seeing somebody in the sun and just. I almost feel pain from it. You know? like, I'm like, just like I need some SPF 50 watching this movie. Yeah, dude. Like it's just hot. Like it's, <laughs> it's not a pleasant 
from the jump movie. It's a weird way to describe the movie, but the movie is described as hot. It's just a very hot, sickly movie. You feel like you're hearing like cicadas the entire time. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Is that what cicadas sound like? It's my cat. <laughs> <laughs> you hear you're hearing the, the, the cicadas, you're seeing like all the fucking high grass. Yeah, just, just the real tall grass, like mow it. It's just there's cows drooling everywhere, and <laughs> just uh, I think meat, meat and hot. I, like hot. I think the reason we don't like it is just because we're just indoor people. We're like, oh, this yeah. is so outside, going on vacations and road trips in the and sun. It's, it's like hot meat, but it's not like oh, fresh from the oven or the pot or the microwave. It's just like it's been sitting out meat. You know, <laughs> our, like, pow- our power went out three days ago. Everything yeah. spoiled. Yeah, but we're still going to eat it. <laughs> you got to. Can't waste not, want not. Uh, but according to my research, uh, this movie came out October 11th, 1974, written by uh, Kim Hinkle and Toby Hooper, directed by Toby Hooper. The uh, budget uh, from the stuff I've read, somewhere between $80,000 and $140,000. And the box office total, I think, till time of this recording is about uh, $30.9 million. So let's address one thing that people have a misconception about with this movie. It is not based on a true story. A lot of people. It is. It is. (laughs) I knew a guy. His face was leather. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, It's not based on a true story. And that's a misconception because with the crawl, this movie does everything to make you think it's like a retelling or a true story. Yeah. And like most people know, it's just loosely based on the crimes of Ed Gein mm. from Wisconsin with all the like bone the, sculptures and stuff like that. Butcher of Plainfield. Yeah. So it's not a true story. Some, a lot of people think like, oh, he Leatherface was real. Well, mm. kind of, but there was no actual Texas Chainsaw Massacre that this is based on. Yeah. And what an what a iconic killer you must be to have this movie psycho and silence uh, of the lambs be like, based on you like your movies are iconic ed gein like i've seen <laughs> some other horror movies with like serial killers i watched that shitty zach efron movie about ted bundy oh i like it's that like, one it's like that's he's okay. so handsome <laughs> he's too and, handsome and, he's... and zach efron <laughs> <laughs> he's too handsome for the movie but to inspire so many horror icons like you know you did some good killing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then made him. them into lampshades or a grave robber. Like and I he guess inspired if that joke. He inspired that joke that every comedian does. Like, you're gonna end up a lampshade in her apartment. That was yeah. Ed Gein at the <laughs> comedy at, at the comedy castle up yeah. in Wisconsin. <laughs> uh and it's uh I, the thing I think uh I, I saw special about Ed Gein is like he would rob like a fresh grave, which is smart because you're not disturbing old soil. Yeah. So if they just buried them, you could dig them up that night. And who's to know? <laughs> you're right. I'm he just was... saying, if you're if you're <laughs> wanting to rob a grave, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm not saying I do that. But if I were to tomorrow, are you at promoting... midnight <laughs> after this podcast? <laughs> I told you to stop promoting your Skillshare of grave robbing <laughs> during the podcast. All I'm saying, get a shovel. It's a good time I'm to just... dig them up. Get it, bring a spade. It's got to be, you want to really be able to break the ground. <laughs> and then don't do what Michael Myers did. Don't don't take the tombstone. It's too no, much dead weight. <laughs> if it's fresh, it's not even going to be there, Gavin. We all know you're, that. You're right. <laughs> it's a perfect time. Um, the uh, Well, we, uh, the, the opening uh, title was uh, voiced by John Larroquette. Uh, and the... the it's a great marketing ploy to see based on a true story or yeah real story. Like that's that was you know and in, in more recent times the Blair Witch. Like uh, I just remember seeing the Blair Witch and my brother being like, okay, some of this movie's fake, but the black and white stuff that's <laughs> real. Why'd you bring your brother up? Now I'm sad. Thanks for bringing uh, him up. <laughs> but yeah, the Blair Witch Project did actually fool me. I was convinced that these people just got murdered and they released the footage in theaters. That's right. Yeah, it's only on pay-per-view. <laughs> nowadays, nowadays it would have been debunked on TikTok immediately. Be yeah. like, well, you can't, if, if you see here, she was at the grocery store just last week. Yeah, so, so and then guess- she'd have to run away while people tried to chase her down with a phone. And the her we're talking about is actually the Blair Witch was at yes. the, the Blair Witch. Like, just leave me alone. I'm just trying to make my stick art. 
Uh, she's at the craft fair trying to sell her wares. <laughs> but uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is, uh, I, it's good. Hot. Hot. Uh, we have some OG titles that they that they were going to go with. We have uh, Head Cheese. That was <laughs> one of the original titles. And it, That's like, a Green I, Bay Packers documentary. Yeah. Or if you don't wash yourself. <laughs> head Cheese. Um <laughs> And I, I had a, uh, an opportunity to try head cheese and I, it just sounds gross. How, the name and how you make it. I passed up on eating head cheese. Isn't it like the cow brains or something? Or they, like... they scrape uh, as the hitchhiker, they scrape all the parts out. And my brother makes it real good. <laughs> um, and then the other OG title was Leatherface. And I could definitely see that being the title, but I think Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the appropriate title for this movie because it's not just about Leatherface and really he's he's a part of the movie but this this is an ensemble it really is it's like the arrested development of horror movies yeah and really everybody plays their part very well and for a long time I got the hitchhiker confused with Chop Top I thought Chop Top was a continuation of the hitchhiker but they are two separate people I, be- I believe that yeah, I'd have to even look this up, but from what I know off the top of my top, my chop top uh, is that they're brothers. Yeah. Like twin brothers. Mm-hmm. So that's probably why they look so similar and why I was like, was Bill Mosley in the original? He's not. And but- also I, I, you can't convince me that the, uh, the hitchhiker in this movie is actually a dirty James Franco. <laughs> With a facial uh, birthmark, because every time I see this dude, I'm like, that's just James Franco and, and sweaty and all dirtied up. That's just regular James Franco on the internet preying on women. That's true. That, that's hey, what he my, does. My, my brother makes head cheese real good. <laughs> you mean Dave Franco, the other yeah. actor? <laughs> Dave yeah. Franco makes the best head cheese. I have heard that. <laughs> uh, and I th- also the the other thing I like about this movie is a uh, short we're in and out it's 80 minutes and for some reason the the last part of the movie i remember watching for the first time and i felt like it went on for a lot longer than it did it's actually not that the the yelling and the yelling it just feels long because it is a non-stop woman screaming yeah and it's just it's just 83 brawless minutes gavin (laughs) just (laughs) just um (laughs) The seventies were a good time. Just let them hang, baby. Let them hang. I watched this movie twice and prep for this podcast. Once just regular watch, watch it through. But then I watched it another time with the, actually the first time I rewatched it with the commentary with Toby Hooper, Gunnar Hansen, who was uh Leatherface, and then Dan uh, Pearl, who was the uh, director of photography. So mm-hmm. uh, I'll have some notes from that as well. Okay, but uh, I don't I don't know where you want to go. Do you, you don't want to you want to start with the kids, the uh, Scooby Doo gang and the band? Yeah, I let, let let's start with the gang because I these characters were very likable. They were all super. Are good. You sure, there. all of them were, Gavin. <laughs> <There's> Sally. A- <laughs> I don't. I think they're all likable. I think that Franklin is a bit much i think franklin has a, a mental a, a mental illness that nobody else has ever had because it's so indistinguished what it could be it's just when, annoying he's just, annoying <laughs> he's just annoying and yeah and uh also you could be handicapped and i'll or uh i don't know what the term you would want to use now but i don't i don't think he's an asshole because he's handicapped i think he's just an asshole gavin (laughs) and that's fair and there were moments where i didn't mind him as much because i remember just hating him it's not till about halfway through when he's just the worst (laughs) just the absolute worst he's just like expecting his sister to push him through the woods and it's like the (laughs) base wheelchair like push me well (laughs) I like, the way you it. Like, I like the way you describe it as base wheelchair. Like this is an RPG. <laughs> You're like, that's a fucking wheelchair you start out with. He's putting no points into it. He, he's not, he's not trying to grind and level up his wheelchair. <laughs> They're not like, even off-road tires yet. Like pushing a wheelchair is fine if you're in like a building with a regular floor, but they're just in the woods. Like there's also they don't even give him an actual ramp. It's just two planks he has to. I think back then that was it. Like that was it. Like well, there was no air conditioning in the van, so it's just like 
Uh, yeah, and I I love that he uh, is pissing in this, uh, this <laughs> in a jar and in some kind of peanut jar, and then I hope just spilled it all over himself <laughs> as he rolled down the hill. It's a very weird opening to a movie where yeah. man in wheelchair pees in <laughs> pees in can gets startled rolls downhill. You ever like, tried to pee sitting down like that, like in a car? Yeah, I, I have. It's very hard, and you it's, don't want to. Also, it's a, difficult wide brim on that uh, container like it's... <laughs> you gotta you gotta put it in the can to make sure that nothing else happens because yeah, otherwise be, you just piss it on yourself you gotta like, be point blank on that you gotta really execute or else you're gonna pee yeah. all over yourself i like to pee in the can and then just pour it on myself that's what i like to do Gavin. <laughs> well you know what brent to your hewn loves piss plate we all know this i call it the tcm special that's what i call it <laughs> well even yeah. be- even before they uh they are in the van we open up in the cemetery with just the grossest like looks like melted face opening on a but if you go to brooklyn it's just art like that's all like (laughs) there's somebody in an in an art installation right now like yeah i this is my grandmother who i taxidermied to my grandfather and the other faces are pretty melted but you gotta really have a deep understanding to see what i'm doing if you don't like it's because you're dumb and you don't like (laughs) art (laughs) um yeah the, he's, they're pissing on the highway and then pretty soon they they pick up the hitchhiker first off don't pick up a hitchhiker there I, I, there there is no scenario where i pick up hitchhikers stephanie will pick up hitchhikers sometimes She's like i bet they're a single mother i'm like that's arlene warnos like the, like <laughs> just leave them on the side of the road and she'll do this to like people who aren't even asking for a ride she, she met a guy one time outside live like a pet food center who had like a, a cat and he's like, I'm just trying to get to the uh, truck stop so I can find a ride. And Stephanie's, and Stephanie, my very sweet girl, was like, I'll take you. I was like, well, you're lucky you didn't get murdered. Like, this is yeah. an unsafe world we live in. You're way too trusting. I'm going to miss you when you go into a gutter with a clown. Like, yeah, I've I, never, uh, like, wanted to pick up a stranger. I, I don't sometimes not want to be in a car with somebody I know, Gavin. <laughs> so. But just seeing this hitchhiker on the side of the road, he is not the creme de la creme of not murderers. They roll. They're like, is that dirty James Franco? <laughs> like, get him in the car. We love his movies. Yeah. Uh, Pineapple Express. That's great. Uh, <laughs> he, he's, he climbs in and I, I don't know how you feel about the, uh, I think we get really see who Franklin is. We, we get to see who Sally is later, that aspect of her being essentially tortured. Uh, but I, I feel like the rest of the characters, we don't get to see a lot of them, but it's also, this is a quick movie. Yeah. And some of them are just, bam, dead, you know? We, not everybody's getting an arc in this bad boy. No. Like, I like that we've got Disco Stew driving, <laughs> <laughs> driving the car. Everybody calls him Disco Stew, but it, it's it's absolutely true. He I'm going to roll yeah. the window down so you're comfortable while Disco Stew does <laughs> his thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Jerry is he's he's a total Jerry. He's driving the van and like just imagine all the shit going on behind him. He's like, hey, is that what's going on? And it's yeah. Jerry's fault they picked up this hitchhiker. Like, just keep driving. Yeah, dude. Yeah, this is all your fault. And then Franklin is like bonding with him and like it's my knife. Let's talk about head cheese. And yeah. then he, immediately the red flags are there when the hitchhiker's like, Oh, I got some photos of dead cows. And they're like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and also, I, the uh, the thing that makes me laugh about this movie uh, is like Franklin is just like, just to the guy's face is just like, I think we picked up Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting right there. <laughs> and, and then he's he's talking about his family. He's like, I must be a whole family of Draculas. <laughs> You're why are you insulting this dude to his face? You and you picked him up. You you had no inclination to pick up the Dracula. Yeah, the Dracula. I do love the hitchhiker's hustle though, where he's like, I'll take a picture of you, and then tries to charge him two fucking dollars. Yeah. And, I love it. That is such a good move. And then when they don't want it, he proceeds to light it on fire like an early Snapchat. Like <laughs> if you don't want it. I'm going to burn it. You don't want this dick pic? It's gone now. <laughs> Forget it. 
Um, and I, th- I, I don't know where it comes in the sequence of the scene, but uh, he's cutting himself. Yeah, like, just for no, he's like, let me see your knife. <laughs> yeah, just like, unprovoked, like, yeah, this is uh, even before all the try. I, I think he, I think he cuts himself, then takes the photo, and it's like <laughs> he's got the blood <laughs> running down his arm. <laughs> It's like this dude. I don't know what his game is, but I'm intrigued. Yeah, this is quite the performance. <laughs> he cuts himself, then takes our photo, then charges us two dollars. He's which like is that, really a steal. He's like that guy. Like I was in Chicago one time, and he handed me a copy of The Onion. He just handed it to me, and he goes, "That'll be five dollars." <laughs> like he didn't tell me up front that it was like it cost money. He just handed it to me, and then that was the trick of like. That'll be five dollars. Like he's that guy, that like a like a street performer. That before you even know, you owe this guy money. You're like, I I just went forty thousand dollars in debt, and all he did was play the bucket drums. Yeah, yeah. There was a three card money, and I was in deep. <laughs> did Did you pay the guy five dollars? No, I was like, no, I'm good. Thank you though. Like it's like <laughs> I thought you just handed me something. Uh, but that was the grift, and then then he cuts Franklin's arm. Like, yeah, because he well, I mean, there has to be consequences if you don't give him two dollars for the photo. Yeah, and they all and they shit on this dude's photo too. Like, that's not a very good photo. They like, no, it's a good one. It's a good and, one. And my brother takes it real good. He, <laughs> he just he keeps saying that. And he cuts he cuts Franklin. And you know what sound uh you hear when he cuts Franklin? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so then it takes them cutting Franklin, they they throw him out of the car finally. This movie has a weird obsession with people blowing raspberries. I don't know. If, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that I think that was, was like, just a thing back then. Of, was that like calling somebody the C word back then? Just like, because oh, there's a, next Tuesday. <laughs> there's a lot of raspberry blowing. Yeah. I just think that back then that was a thing that people did. It's like now nobody really whistles back then. <laughs> back in the day, people were whistling. We got to bring back raspberries and whistling. Or what we talked about Dawn of the Dead, like the, you got to, yeehaw! Like that was, a, that was a thing that people did back then. Different time, back before all this cancel culture. Well, this, the cinematography of this scene, I saw a, a painting uh, at uh, the, the Living Dead weekend that I talked about last week or last episode. But uh, the cinematography, when you watch this again, of like it's a full sky and mm-hmm. then the van pulls up and the hitchhiker gets in, but it's kind of all on the bottom of the screen. I think mm-hmm. it's a great shot. Like this movie has some really like uh, at least best horror cinematography, but you could probably throw it in with just movies in general of certain shots. I'm like, man, you can't really knock anything that happened in this in this scene. If it had come out today, it would have it feels like it, it would have been produced by A24. Because yeah. it's very artistic. And then the closest thing, and I, I don't want to give too much away. I, I actually, I'll save that, that, that for later for our recommendations. And when I recommend it later, it'll make sense. Mm-hmm. But this has a lot of great cinematography, that shot where the one girl gets up from the swinging Swing. bench. And that's like one of the most iconic shots. And they actually didn't want to do that scene at first. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then they're like, because it wasn't on their sheet for the day. And they're like, no, Toby Hooper's like, no, let's do it. Let's do it. And it became like one of, one of the most famous shots in all of horror. Pam. Pam. It's up from the, uh, yeah. And um, in the commentary, I don't know if it was Gunnar Hansen, but I didn't think about this, but you see, like, she's wearing that top where you can see her whole back, mm-hmm. which is perfect foreshadowing for she's about to get this hook. Mm-hmm. Like, I never even saw it that way until he said that on the commentary. I mean, Leatherface is definitely basing his kills on what you're wearing. Yeah. So if I uh, I'm wearing my Jinkos, we'll see what. <laughs> he's Probably. Gonna, he's gonna skateboard with you. That's what's yeah. gonna happen. <laughs> Just with the chainsaw <laughs> on the half pipe. Nine hundred. <laughs> and I do like the uh, the hitchhiker somehow like left his mark on the van, maybe to let the other family members know of here's this blood on the bar you know whether but he, but he doesn't show up till later so he's not like like texting them be like if you see a van with blood on it yeah I, I i don't think it's that deep but i like to think that and i like yeah. that he's kicking the metal van as it drives away. <laughs> <laughs> okay i just think that was back in the day is like that's what you do is you just kick things and <laughs> somehow that really damages a piece of metal then they end up going to a gas station where you meet the cook 
and they're like all out of gas and it's like hmm, what are you selling and like you want some oh, you want some hot barbecue you just want some yeah it's already hot do you want to uh I also like the guy that washes the van windows was uh, Texas Louis C.K. <laughs> just at a, in a redhead, just balding. And I'm like, this is no place for a ginger to be in this hot. <laughs> and then we don't see that guy again. We don't no. know what happens to him. I like to imagine he has no no relation to the family. He just needed a job. Yeah. He's like, I, it's, a, it's a living. I'll come <laughs> He could have been on the, the Flintstones as just one of the, the appliances. But he did a bad job washing the van because he left all that blood on it. Like, he, he's washing yeah. the grill and, like, the windshield. But it's like, hey, man, there's, like, there's some... <laughs> it's, it's like Passover back here. Like, yeah, the are... mark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, they're out of gas. And they he tries to, the cook just tries to discourage him from going to, was it the grandpa's, ha- the old house or something that they yeah. go to? The old grandpa house. And once they get to the old grandpa house, not worth the trip. Like, just not anything. Like, they spend very little time at this house. And it's and it's pretty crappy. It's not it's a very pr- good house. Yeah, it would just be purely for nostalgia of here's where I used to play. But now it's just infested with a spider nest. You know, <laughs> there's a there. That's a really cool shot. I, I forgot about the daddy long leg. Mm, yeah. Them daddy with his long leg. Just <laughs> crawling crawl out the wall. Uh, and then there's like uh, animal parts in there, and then this is this is where Franklin Franklin really hits a stride, of, and that's probably a bad pun that I didn't mean to make. But, uh, <laughs> just really he's on a roll. He's yeah, he's got this this half eaten sausage in his mouth that he somehow turned into J Jonah Jameson, <laughs> fixed Spider Man. He's a menace. Yeah, hey, come on, Franklin, it'll be fun, Franklin. Like you just. <laughs> And, uh, and apparently, you know, I think this is in all the commentaries and all the facts, but like he was Franklin, not camera rolling like this dude was a method actor and everybody hated him. Yeah. And he, he said that he became Franklin because he was afraid if he got out of character, he would lose Franklin. Yeah. I'm like, I don't think I don't, I don't think so. I think if you just think about the most annoying person you could think of you'll be able to get him back Just start. Bl- uh, his mantra is raspberries. He just has to go back to blowing raspberries and he'll get he'll find the character i do feel kind of bad for franklin he's very annoying but i do feel bad because nobody nobody in this crew of scoobies tries to make his life any more fun or better they bring him along and then just let him know what a burden he is so i get it i i get where he can i think he's i think he sucks but i also think he's misunderstood I'm not trying to defend him because he is pretty annoying, but they just all go upstairs that he cannot get to. And he's just like, I guess I'm on the ground floor where everybody goes off to have sex in a watering hole. And you know, if they were trying to bang, he'd be right there being like, come on, Franklin, it'll be fun. Let's hold the camera, Franklin. (laughs) Just eating the sauce the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) Really getting our ass. (laughs) You're saying he's misunderstood. So from what I'm hearing, you think Franklin is Leatherface's son. <laughs> is that a deep cut? Is that a real thing? Is that is that a fan? That's fiction? a real uh, fan theory. I just made up. No. Well, we we should spread it everywhere. Yeah. Uh, what so if Franklin was Leatherface's son, and he couldn't he couldn't face the fact <laughs> that he was annoying. <laughs> So they look for the water and hole. Of course, it's it's been dried up, but they hear a generator, uh, and now they find this. They found the Sawyer house, and apparently, in that the uh, commentary, like that that house was right across the street from the Sawyer house. Mm-hmm. So they make it look like it's behind, but uh, yeah. So they find the uh, the Sawyer house and a bunch of uh, like a graveyard of cars. It's almost like they've done something bad to a lot of people. I don't know i there's a there's only a couple deaths in this movie but i feel like a lot of them are justified because yeah kirk and pam just go with trespassing like yeah, all they these knock, all these deaths are because they're the you know you, if you're in the Texas. water in jaws nobody would be like oh that shark's a dick you know <laughs> but pam and kirk knock on the door they're like, well, let's get some of this gas from this mm-hmm. generator. Also, that's a weird thing. We're strangers. Can we have some gas? Um, I think back then that wasn't such a big deal. Back back when people were friendly. Yeah. 
when we left our doors doors unlocked. (laughs) (laughs) They they knock on the door and their door was unlocked because the door just opens up on its own. They're like, okay. And the door was squeaky. It made a noise like, (laughs) (laughs) and then they got some WD 40 and it went, nothing because yeah, yeah, yeah. it fixed it it fixed it like my dad told me to <laughs> just squirt a little wd-40 in there but they, 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 they just walk in like nobody opened the door it wasn't like the door but like come in like i maybe i would like open the door and be like hello is anybody in here you know like but he's balls deep in this house he, yeah he walks in and he walks in pants sits outside on the porch but kirk like just wanders in like i'm gonna look at all this stuff and that's when we meet good old leatherface who pops out like a haunted house scares like, like a haunted house actor and grunts and hits him with a hammer just grunting like a pig like yeah <laughs> you're, like, <laughs> you're like what um this like that's uh what a great kill it is it's a very simple effective kill the first one didn't get him so he has mm-hmm. to hit him again and just anytime like any time of bludgeoning in includes a twitching yep. of like spasming, that's what really takes it over the top for me. That's when I want when I watch wrestling and somebody's so hurt that they start twitching. I'm like, maybe this isn't real. They threw in that twitch. Maybe maybe they got hurt for real. I would I would say this kill with like the the sliding door kill is in the top five of all kills in of horror. Yeah, just slamming the door. And you see the door slam really imitated in other Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. Mm-hmm. Of course, the ending of Saw, uh, the game over. So the, the the sliding door has its place in horror. And for some reason, I, I like I watched it with Stephanie and, and I warned her. I was like, there, there's a jump scare coming up. It's really not that big of a jump scare. There's no, kinda... there's no uh, like tension. Yeah, it just happens. Yeah, there, there's no like building music and then like caca, like no loud yeah. noise. It's just a man showing up. You get a glimpse of him raising a hammer, hitting him in the face. And it's such a the the ADR is just the sound effect. It's just like a like it's like a, it's a like a thud. Like yeah, it just sounds real. It just sounds rough. Like that man just got hit in the head with a hammer. Yeah, twice. Uh, and and the selling of the Twitch, like, I just think it's a great kill. He's the rock of horror movie deaths, just really selling his <laughs> ass off. I also liked it before they even go in, they found a tooth on the porch. Yeah, and like, he, Kirk is like just a like... a human tooth. And they think nothing of it. They're like, yeah, this is the thing that happens. Uh, they said that they found all these uh, parts. Uh, there was a veterinarian nearby that was throwing all the carcasses in a pile. So they just went through and picked out the teeth and bones. God, that's a weird job to have. Just in a hot, stinking. Mm. Um, Pam, Pam then kind of follows Kirk in. Again, just if one person trespasses, like that doesn't give you the permission, to, like go in and search for the person who also trespassed. Like Kirk, she goes in, she trips over. I guess the chicken room and it's yeah, just like freaking bones, out bones like human bones like th- it's also when you like you see how this house is like laid out and all the junk in it and it turns to that meme of uh, I don't I remember who's in the meme but it just says bitch you live like this <laughs> <laughs> like, you just know that it has like a stench of chicken poop and just that 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 hot probably pee and there's like feathers everywhere and like bones. And it's just they're not hoarding, but that is a hoarding that were just feces and that they don't show the feces, but you know, it's there, you, you know? know, just under the surface of feathers, it's there. They yeah. give a great, great shot of like the bone bench, which <laughs> yeah, I got a bone bench, <laughs> got a bone bench <laughs> and just her looking around, freaking out. It is the. It's the hottest scene in the movie. Nana's like, it's so hot. It's just like. No, I think it is so hot. (laughs) It's so hot. Just watching a hot young single. Yeah. On the floor and some feathers near a, near a bone bench. I think that that's a Brazzer series actually is bone bone bench. bench. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's just gross. Like, and you're like, oh, I can't believe like people live here. 
<laughs> and when she runs away and gets caught by Le- Leatherface, I was like, at least she's out of that room. She is yeah. getting she is getting hung on a hook, but at least she's out of that stinky, <laughs> sticky room. I uh, that's another. There's just there's very few kills in this movie, but like she almost gets away. Mm-hmm. She's out the door, but then like sh- there's nothing she can do. She's wrapped up in his arms. She's still kicking, and that that's a scary moment in this movie of like you tried and it didn't work. Mm-hmm. And this scene, her on the hook, was actually on like the poster, and it's it's which one is of the- a great movie poster by the yeah, way. Yeah, I love those seventies movie posters. I love just something about the artwork on a white background. Mm -hmm. really pop so many movie posters today are just photoshopped to hell and you don't really get the art like they used to have art departments that Mm -hmm. would actually hand draw and like draw these posters and texas the massacre is a great movie poster you've got the girl on the hook you got leatherface there you know what you're getting it sells you on the movie with an image who will survive and what will be left of them yeah great tagline great tagline you know you don't really see a lot of taglines on movies anymore because they they just assume you're gonna see it there's no tagline for jurassic park or jurassic world dominion because they just say like you 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 know what you're getting it's dinosaurs again that's the tagline is dinosaurs (laughs) again (laughs) you like them you're getting them again (laughs) it happened again can you believe it six (laughs) times i released the dinosaur six times (laughs) Honey, we blew up the dinosaurs. <laughs> they they put her on the hook, and it's a scene where you think you see more than you actually do. It's that psycho where it's like, I saw the hook go into her. Mm-hmm. I saw it, and you're like, no, you don't. You see her back against it, and then you just see her dropped on it, but you don't see it go in. There's no huge blood spatter, or mm-hmm. they don't make a, a meal of it behind her or anything. No, I mean, I believe I'm, they made a meal out of her, but... Uh... <laughs> But just her hanging there screaming, just any type of suspension or because some, some people do like that suspension art where they like suspend themselves with hooks. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's your back. That's your yeah. back. Dave Navarro on Ink Master Finale. <laughs> <laughs> that is your back. It is going to bleed and not be great. Um, and but then you just feel it in, in your spine. You just feel it. Yes. Yeah, probably got under the rib cage. So it's just. Ugh, ugh. Ugh. And then Leatherface fires up that chainsaw and it's very tame it's not mm-hmm. like what it would become in other movies he, he's carving up kirk but it's not it's not a lot and that and that scene that was a real chainsaw and he just told the guy not to move gunner hansen was like i'll just get it close to you but that's, that's a real like wood chips hitting him in the face like oh that's not I don't, yeah that's a lot like, like we talked about in dawn of the dead like that's when i'd be like i don't think i trust like the helicopter it's yeah. like i don't think i trust you with the chainsaw yeah yeah and it's just to watch your boyfriend get cut up by a chainsaw in front of you while you've been placed on a meat hook yeah that's in, no bueno not a good time for anybody no bro you are killing the vibes in here <laughs> bro you gotta stop killing the vibes and then we don't see Pam again for a little bit. And that's when everybody else kind of arrives at the house because they all like, well, where where did everybody go? Mm-hmm. And then they all trespass too. Yeah. Everybody trespassed it on the Sawyer house. Uh, and I don't know. I don't. Well, who else do we have left? We have Franklin, we have Sally, and then we have Kirk, right? Jerry. Jerry. This goes to. And he he just gets it in the kitchen, right? Just with yeah, the hammer. He, another he, hammer. Yeah, because he opens up the freezer and sees Pam and then Leatherface right. is like, no, that's for later. And like yeah. hits him with a hammer again. You Leather- gotta spoil your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> this could be the Texas Hammer Massacre because he uses that hammer a lot. Just a blunt, just heavy. And then after he kills uh, Disco Stew, then he's searching around the house like he this dude has no idea what's going on he thinks they're under assault yeah like there are more people around here i love that leather face he sees he's freaking out making hog noises and just he just goes to the front room and just opens the windows like it's too dark in here we need some sunlight in here it's look at the sun it's so and then he just like sits at the window and like freaks out and that's where we see like the leather face teeth and like Mm -hmm. a face on his face like (laughs) Uh, just and I and we'll talk about it later, but I think Gunnar Hansen was like in the script, it was written as gibberish, but then they also wrote, Here's what that means, here's <laughs> what you want you to convey. 
So he went to a pig farm and learned, like, watch the pigs and learn how to make pig noises. But then also he went to a mental institution to watch people because in his mind, Leatherface is a mentally handicapped person that never learned how to talk. So he's watching real people to see how they move, to talk and react. I think he does a really good job. He does a lot with a little in yeah. this in, in this movie. Like you feel you 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 feel like he's the strongest of the brothers, but he's also mentally the weakest and is like bullied by the cook and the hitchhiker. Yeah. And you really see that they you use him as the heavy, as the muscle and have him chase people with chainsaws and shit. This like watching the cook later in the movie, which we'll get to like the cook is Mo from the Three Stooges. <laughs> and he just like uh, Leatherface is Curly. And then the hitchhiker is uh, Larry. Larry, who will stand up for Leatherface or himself. But then Mo always gets the best out of everybody. Just like a with a broomstick. Instead of like hitting people in the eyes with his fingers, he's whacking them over the head with a broomstick. <laughs> so we got to talk about Franklin's demise because... Sally yeah. and Franklin are left together. Like that is not only are your friends missing Sally, but you are stuck with Franklin. Uh, yeah. Just Tell me now uh, push me. And she's like, I can't. Your, your, Sally? Too, yeah. your, your, your chair's too heavy. And he's like, well, don't leave me here. And just I'm like, about give me the flashlight. To, like, <laughs> give me the flashlight. And then he just kind of flashlights through the woods, like a car, just yeah. going and like, then I feel, I feel like if I got to push this whole dude in a chair, I'm going to go look and see where we're going to begin with. Like chart your trail. Is, yeah. This is not a maybe. I need to know where we're going before we head out into the woods with, with your chair. Yeah. That's just not a, not a yeah. good time. For and anybody. also I'd be pulling you. I wouldn't be pushing you. Yeah. You, but she's like, she's doing everything wrong. Yeah. And then they're looking around and there's that great shot. Like, I think I heard something. And he turns around and just Leatherface in the woods, sneaking up. Was it sneaking up with somebody with a chainsaw? Yeah, like eventually <laughs> they're going to know he's there. And that's what's been one of the issues with the entire franchise is the chainsaw, while an effective and dope murder weapon, is not for stealth-based missions. But there are so many times where Leatherface will be hiding in the backseat of a car and mm -hmm. then puts his chainsaw in quiet mode and just quietly yeah. turns it on like and we we all have had power tools where it's like this goddamn thing won't start <laughs> and it's like every pull this dude hits that chainsaw <laughs> just no what? problems he's got one of those nice uh <laughs> he's got a nice chainsaw yeah and like so he 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 like uh, franklin gets it like just a blade through the stomach and and he survives Sally, for a minute because he's just like slashing him up and Franklin drops his flashlight mm -hmm. and it's just, that's when you know he's dead. And there's some blood spurt. There's, there's some blood spittle in this scene. Like not a lot, but it's again, like, again, I don't know how you would have thought this movie would be PG. Just, okay. So he just cut him up, but there was no blood. <laughs> like it's heavily implied chainsaw violence. Yeah. Um, and then we get Sally running through the woods, which according to Gunnar Hansen, she was so slow that he had to like find things to do on the way to like run after like so he's cutting up trees and stuff mm -hmm. trying to get to her because apparently she was just so slow running through the woods. <laughs> this chasing goes on for a while and, and, it, and it goes nowhere. Yeah, like, she, she at one point runs into the to the house where Ev just just leave the door open at that point and yeah. my favorite part of this entire movie she runs to the house and then leatherface cuts up his own door yeah because like you gotta know where the key is and i love this idea later they don't on give leatherface the key yeah they don't trust him <laughs> with the key what i my favorite thing is later is is, is the cook come home he's like look what you did to the door yeah <laughs> They're, you they know are, they if are, he was wearing a hat, he would have hit him over the head with his own hat. They, and they reference this door like, look what your brother did to the door. He messed it all up. Like, they are so <laughs> mad about this door. And that is such like an older brother, sibling yeah. type thing. Like, why'd you do that to the door? Well, and you also got a room full of bones. Why do you <laughs> care about a door? <laughs> but Sally, Sally loves jumping through windows. I don't know if it gets her going, but she... <laughs> 
no hesitation, go, goes upstairs, meets Grandpa, and is like, help me. And he's like, uh. you know, I thought this dude was dead the whole time. Like, I don't, what person sees this dude and thinks this guy's alive? And if he <laughs> is, what's he gonna do? <laughs> he's gonna get up and be like, oh, well, uh, let me get my gun, my dear. Let me suck on that finger. <laughs> but then she jumps out a second story window, no hesitation, which I, I get that. But yeah, I mean, uh, the, given the alternative, okay, you know. But then it's just back and forth. She runs to the gas station. The cook acts like he's going to help. He doesn't, makes her tie herself up, hits her with a broom, <laughs> as you do. Like, that's somehow just more insulting. Like, the guy who was washing the car earlier had to be watching, like, he's hitting him with a broom again. That's what yeah, he does. That's I could I should have told you. Um, I do like the cook is like, there's like four lines I wrote down. Of like he's coming after with the bag and the broom, and he's like, Nobody's gonna hurt you. And then he's like, I hope you're not too uncomfortable down there in the truck while jabbing her with the broom. <laughs> and then he says, uh, he's like, I just can't uh I can't t- uh, take no pleasure in killing. And then he says, No need to torture the poor girl. Like <laughs> she's tied up, her friends are dead, and you're like the guy that's like, Oh, come on. Let's Come not, on. but then jabbing her with a broomstick. <laughs> and then they, they do get reunited with the hitchhiker and they just have that weird dinner scene where they're all just kind of, and she screams for 49 minutes of the runtime. Could be MVP of the movie, right? Like, yeah. And that scene is really uncomfortable because it's just like, she's psychologically broken down. Mm-hmm. And just she screams for so long, and then she realizes that she's probably gonna die. And then they bring, they cut her finger, and then Grandpa comes over and starts sucking on them thingies. Well, he he's the best to ever do it to kill. And it, I I mean I guess I guess Franklin was right. They are a bunch of Draculas. <laughs> There's a whole family of Draculas. <laughs> You're right. Grandpa is just sucking on the finger, and it's such a it's it's a very uncomfortable scene because. The, the guy who played grandpa was only like in his 20s and they put a bunch of makeup on him so you got 10 like, hours it took 10 hours to get that make and i don't think it's that great a makeup like, it's not it looks like a mask yeah it looks like it's an old you could have achieved that in five minutes have him put on a really bad mask and, and have him just got like, the mask from goosebumps because it looks <laughs> about the same like from the, the haunted mask yeah it Ooh, won't come off yeah. it won't come off carly beth no <laughs> And he, he said, like, the, I think the dude was 18, again, 18 to 20, but this dude's young, and he's like, it was, like, so hot, he's like, I'm only putting this makeup on once. <laughs> so they ended up having a 20, 27 hours just straight day of filming the, the dinner scene. So mm-hmm. by the end of it, they really were, like, their characters of crazy. <laughs> And then they, they're, they're going to kill Sally, but they want to let Grandpa do it. So mm-hmm. he's, he's got his uh, appetizer of sucking finger. And they're trying to, they bring out like the brain bashing bucket and he can't hold the hammer. Yeah. And it's it's weirdly funny. And then, but he does start landing some blows though. Like that still hurts. Like even if you have like yeah. a hammer dropped on you for, from a feeble old man, like that's still a hammer being dropped on you. Well, and then that scene, everybody's moving. The cook is in the background moving. Everybody's like, it's so it's such chaos because they're all at 10. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, you could, like, even if you don't think it's scary, you could say this is too much to have going on at once. Everybody's moving. Everybody's talking. It's loud. They're trying to get a job done. Grandpa can't hold a hammer. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's sensory overload. And... It's what makes this movie different than just regular regular slashers. I know that it would devolve into that over the years, but this movie isn't so much about blood and guts as it is psychologically traumatizing. Yeah, it's it's like, and even like it was so traumatizing, like that. So it took however many hours in like a hundred and something degree heat. They filmed it during the day, but they blacked out the light, the the windows. Mm Mm-hmm. And that scene where they, they're trying to get Sally's finger to bleed, Gunnar Hansen's got like a pump on the knife, like a blood pump, and it's not going. So they filmed it so many times that he took the tape off the knife and cut her finger for real. Mm-hmm. And then 
I, I don't know if it's all one take. I tried to watch it specifically, but then you got this dude just sucking on her finger, maybe with real blood coming out. Yeah. Like and you that's... know she's already dirty because it's a dirty movie. So let me put this lady's finger in my mouth. Mm. Also, it's bleeding. Yeah, that's gross. That's, yeah, that's just not, that's nasty. And then I'll like, also it's like in a, in like a just movie etiquette of being an actor. It's like, you just hurt the other person and she's <laughs> acting like you hurt her, but nobody believes it because that's what the scene calls for. It's <laughs> very much exorcist of like uh, Reagan getting flopped around on, on her bed and her back is really hurt, but nobody's believing. And like firing a real gun. Next yeah. To... <laughs> on set. We, we yeah. should have had William, William freaking weekend in here. To... <laughs> the friggin weekend with some William. guns off in this house that he like he could have just only made it better on a movie that's already at 10 yeah and then sally does get away because she's able to like get, get free of her bonds after getting smacked in the head hammer and the door is messed up there's no door but she still is like <laughs> window window this just... is such like one of my least favorite tropes in horror is somebody f- just fully jumping out of a window and the first time I watched this, I'm like, they did it twice. <laughs> like they do it twice in the span of 15 minutes. Yeah. She's jumping off second story windows. She's jumping out of first story windows. Yeah. And it's not safety glass. It's shards of glass. <laughs> like she's going to be cut up. She, she could kill. She could die going through a window. But she just gets up and brushes it off. And she runs to the street. And then you have that great scene of pretty lady Leatherface chasing her down the driveway well, you got the, the hitchhiker behind her too yeah like i'm just almost playing cat and mouse because this dude could catch her yeah but it's just like that he's fucking with her yeah and then she she waves down down a truck after it hits the hitchhiker hitchhiker does get splattered and killed on the road and then <laughs> the dude gets out of the truck and is like oh shit nope just yeah get, well then they run back through in. the car to get out of the car the like, truck just, just drive. drive just drive, just drive away even also, he's not gonna he can't the, go through that door the trucker is a cross between claudio sanchez from uh coheed and cambria coheed and cambria and hurley from lost <laughs> but just look on his face when he sees le- le- leather face like oh you, hell yeah you hear him go like, oh shit like you but, know that he grabs a wrench though and just fastballs it, yeah. Just, just fastballs it into Leatherface's leather face, <laughs> and knocks him down. And seeing the chainsaw go into Leatherface's leg is like, oh, oh no. Well, and I read that they put a metal plate on his leg and put some meat on top of that to cut through. Was it? Did they, they use a real chainsaw on his leg? I th- I think so. That's so dangerous. <laughs> so bizarre. Like, yeah, but. I guess that was the time. It looked good. It, yeah, it, looked it looks good. looks real. And just that that shot of pretty pretty woman Leatherface coming down the driveway, and it's I don't even know if it's like that's the cover of the DVD version that I watched, the Blu-ray 40th anniversary edition, and it's in black and white, I think. But that's the shot that's like so iconic mm-hmm. of just him running with that chainsaw in a suit, but also wearing somebody's face like yeah he wanted to dress up for dinner yeah and he's and it's, the face is all made up and then sally finally gets it gets away she hops in somebody's truck and they drive away um the truck driver is still, is still running somehow like yeah, we, like we, I, we don't ever know what happens to him he's just i don't think he could get very far because he is claudio from coheed and cambria and hurley from laws <laughs> yeah. so he, i think he got maybe half mile down the road he's like no, nah, I guess just chainsaw me, Daddy. Like, I guess we're, I guess we're good. This because is it for me. All Leatherface is doing is just like scratching up the door. It's not like he went through <laughs> the wind. Just go, just, just go. Well, you know, it's a clutch. He popped the clutch. Yes, like grinding. You know, the, you know how it is. Um, and then she, they just drive off in the back of the truck, and she is appeared to be nuts and relieved, and it's a like a scream and a laugh and a cry and all that just soaked in blood and then uh leatherface does another iconic shot of him just freaking out having a tantrum spinning that chainsaw that has been re- replicated by people at conventions wrestlers with title belts just great scene and that's how the movie ends 
And Stephanie watched it with me. She's like, that's it. That's how it ends. I go, yep. And she's like, oh, okay. And it, yeah, that it could be just, you, we've seen so many movies since then that may have borrowed heavily from that, that this, how that, cause I watched it twice and both times I was like, huh, it just cuts. Like there's no like, you crumb bum, you let him go. Like it just <laughs> cuts, you know? It just Le- Leatherface does his dance and we we out. Yeah. And I I think it's uh, one of the, I, you could, if somebody said this is the top or top five, like best horror movie or scariest horror movie, I couldn't tell you no. And yeah, and that's how I feel. I, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre has had, so many bad sequels oh yeah that, that people forget that the original is so good and i know you enjoyed the most recent one that was on netflix i thought it was i i, I thought it was enjoyable but i thought it was pretty mm-hmm. bad and i think the more they do with like bad leatherface movies the more you forget how just great and original the first one is is and and the people kind of lump that that in with all of them they think it's really schlocky this is just a well shot artsy movie that's got great sound design it's got just a great art style it definitely feels like dawn of the dead it feels very 70s mm-hmm. it, it, if you put that on you can go this, this this was the 70s there there's no doubt what time period's in it has a very distinct style the hot sweaty texas style You've got a great killer, and it, it, it's it's such a shame that it doesn't get more respect as a franchise. And I don't I don't know if it's one of those where it was so early that it it was too early, or if it's too gritty. It's not like you know maybe your mom has seen Halloween or my mom mm-hmm. has seen Halloween, but it's also maybe TCM is too gritty for for your mom to see it you know it, it, it's really the the middle child of psycho and halloween you had psycho come out before in the 60s mm-hmm. where Alfred, Alfred hitchcock is a genius i don't think i'm saying anything new there where psycho was like who <laughs> who that <laughs> <laughs> but you had psycho come out that people loved then you have Texas Chainsaw the Massacre, but you also had like The Exorcist coming out around this time. You had Jaws coming out a year later. So it kind of got lost in the shuffle, especially in 78 when Halloween came out. It's like, oh, well, we don't, we have a new boogeyman who we're afraid of now. Well, and there's a, another horror movie podcast that I enjoy that's definitely not as good as this one, but it's called yeah, The ev- not. Evolution of Horror. But that guy, Mike Munzer, he's from uh, from England, but he would also not really classify this as a slasher, but more of folk horror. Do you, is this a slasher to you? I think it, if you're not going to classify it as a slasher, I think it's still a slasher at its at its core. You've got the teenagers, you've got the killer, you've got the mask. I, I think it's a slasher. If you don't classify it as, as a slasher, I think it would be more considered psychological horror. I, I wouldn't go with like folk horror. I, I would go more, go more psychological horror if we're not yeah. calling it a slasher. Do you think this is like as close to like an exploitation film without being that? No, I, I don't. I don't feel that way. I feel like it didn't go far enough into the into what we would expect from exploitation. There's there's a lot of parts of this movie where, and this is a messed up thought to to say and have, but it's also like if this movie just went a little bit farther, the next thing they would do besides eat or kill this lady would be to rape her. Yeah. Cause even at one point she offers her stuff up. She's like, I'll do anything you want. Mm -hmm. And I do respect the movie for not going there. Um, Anytime a movie kind of, in anytime rape is not not a fun thought. Like killing is one thing, you know? Yeah. Like, Like even in a movie like revenge where it's that's the sexual assault of the main character drives the movie it's still unpleasant to see mm-hmm. and there's a lot of movies around this time last uh i almost said last podcast on the left I like that. <laughs> last house on the left um i spit on your gray mm-hmm. all these movies are like rape revenge films so for texting the massacre to kind of 
restrain and they're like they're just cannibals who want to kill yeah i i respect that more because once you bring in sexual assault elements it then it's too real for a lot of people it, it's it's too it's not real fun. killing is somehow excusable it's too real and at times it's not I don't, I don't know if it was necessarily done back then for shock value now it's just all shock value yeah like i watched the sadness which is a taiwanese zombie movie mm-hmm. and it's just all about sexual assault and it's like after a while like the kills are very gr- gruesome but at, but when you're watching a hundred minutes of the same stuff you're like yeah this is not as shocking anymore this yeah. feels more ex- expletive or but also like exploitive. in this well like a great testament to this film uh, is that how it's shot, how it feels, and how this family acts? That if, if, if I just cut the movie and said, and then they raped her, nobody would be like, no, they didn't. <laughs> Where it was yeah. like, it's that's so messed up that yeah. you can believe it, but they don't do that. Yeah, and I and like, I'm I'm glad they don't. I I think yeah. that yeah. as weird as it sounds, like I think that type of horror definitely has its place in the horror genre yeah to me it's not fun it's like yeah, not it's enjoyable not. you know like one movie and this will come up again but there's that scene in devil's rejects where yeah. they're in, like, in the hotel room and it's like i hate this mm-hmm. i really hate this and you're and you're supposed to hate it but it's it's almost so much that that that's hard to come back from the rest of the movie yeah well, let me let me hit some of these notes and stuff okay. uh, to to lighten our mood here on the TCM. <laughs> Real heavy, yeah. Uh, the film, uh, the the intentional misinformation of uh, the film you're about to see is true was a response to being lied to by the government about things that were going on all over the world, including Watergate, the 1973 oil crisis, and the massacre and atrocities uh in in the vietnam war the lack of sentimentality and the brutality of things that hooper noticed while watching local news whose graphic coverage was epitomized by showing brains spilled all over the road uh led to his belief that man was the real monster here just wearing a different mask so i put a literal mask on the monster in my film the idea of using a chainsaw chainsaw as the uh, murder weapon came to hooper while he was uh in a hardware section at a busy store contemplating how uh, to speed out of the way of the crowd. So he saw chainsaws and he's like, that would work. (laughs) It would. uh, So they, they shot 16 hour days, seven days a week. And I think the overall shooting lasted a month. What it like a, that sounds terrible, but in the big screen, like we're talking about this movie almost 50 years later and you're Mm like, uh, just, what it like a small moment in history to carry out throughout the rest of history, you know, like one month out of 50 years. Yeah. And, and, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, the temperatures peaked at 110 degrees. Uh, Gunnar Hansen later recalled it was 95, hundred degrees every day during filming. They would, uh, wa- they wouldn't wash my costume because they were worried the laundry would lose it or it would change color. So they didn't have enough money for a second costume. So I wore that mask 12 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week for a month. Ugh, really seals in the flavor. That smells worse than Leatherface's gooch. <laughs> like that's gotta be a new saying. <laughs> and we can also talk about the appearance of Leatherface too. I guess this would be a good point to do it, but like in the movie, we have three distinct masks. And if you don't, if you're not aware of it, maybe you, you, you don't pick up on it really. Cause like even the, the kitchen one where he's wearing like the grandma mask, that's kind of a quick, yeah, he's, he's cooking, he's wearing this old lady's <laughs> mask. And then the other, he's got like the quintessential leather face mask. Mm-hmm. But then at the end, he's got the pretty woman uh, mask. And that's my favorite look of leather faces in that suit. Mm-hmm. And see, I'm more, uh, I'm more a fan of the, um, of just the classic leather face mm-hmm. apron. Uh, that's my leather face, but pretty woman. Like I've, I've got the Funko Pops behind me. I've got the regular and I've got the pretty woman as well. But I think, I, I think pretty woman might, I don't think it's as, as famous as regular leather face, but I think it is definitely just a, a, a smidge below. I also just like that they got bones and shit laying all over the house. And then, Leatherface somehow owns a tie. <laughs> like, 
and knows how to tie it. Yeah, apparently, or it was a clip on. Uh, <laughs> Toby Hooper also said, Before I came up with the chainsaw, the story had trolls under a bridge. What a different movie this would have been, Gavin. Uh, we changed that to, to the character who eventually became Leatherface. The idea actually came from a doctor I knew. I remember that he once told me a story about how when he was in pre-med, a pre-med student, the class was studying cadavers and he went into the morgue and skinned a cadaver at, uh, and made a mask for, a, for Halloween. We decided Leatherface would have a different human skin mask to fit each of his moods. Hmm. That's a fun fact. I did not know that uh, a doctor could just cut a face off a cadaver. I, I guess it's if it's for science or Halloween. I'm <laughs> all for it. Uh, filming that scene was the worst time of my life, and I had uh, and I had been in Vietnam with people trying to kill me. So I guess that shows how bad it was. And that's Edwin Neal, the hitchhiker, uh, talking about the uh, dinner party scene. Jesus, just, I I just watching it, just the assault on the senses. And I don't know. I don't know if I could yell for that long, being that hot, just screaming. I did a. And this is completely on a different scale. Me and my friends back in 2004, we we were like 17. We made a Friday the 13th fan film. It's called Jason's Massacre. You you, you can find it on YouTube. Um, I didn't and, know this about you, Gavin. Yeah, yeah. So we we made a Friday the 13th fan film, and my sister's in it. And there's a scene where she like screams for a long time. And it was a lot. And we only shot that over one night, but, mm -hmm. but she like screamed. And by the end of it, she's like, I can't scream anymore. Like I, I can't do this. And I was yeah. like 17. She was like 15. So yeah, just to scream that long for like, cause that dinner party day was like a 30, like, like a, a 27 hour day or something like that. Mm -hmm. You, you would just scream your voice raw. Like there's, you would have nothing after it. Yeah. And, and that's just like day one of mm -hmm. 30. Yeah. You know? Too much. Uh, Toby Hooper said, I gave up uh, eating meat while making that film. In a way, I thought the heart of the film was about meat. It's about the chain of life and killing sentient beings. And that, and it, it has uh, cannibalism in it, although you have to come to that conclusion by yourself because it's only implied. Uh, Guillermo del Toro also gave up uh, eating meat after that movie. I um, actually eat more meat. Yeah, I, I was. I had a big plate of ribs in front of me. I was eating a hot dog actually while yeah, like this is really good. Frank was onto something with this yeah. sausage. Sally, uh, Tubby Hooper allowed Gunnar Hansen to develop Leatherface as he saw fit. He uh, he considered Leatherface uh, quote mentally retarded uh, and never learned to talk properly. So that's where he would uh, he visited some of the the insane asylums. He learned the gibberish. Um, so that was part of the performance and, and the commentaries, like they put three inch, like, um, lifts on my shoes. So I was falling all over the place. Like he almost <laughs> cut himself in the, in the woods because he fell and like just having a chainsaw land on you. Yeah. That's every movie we talk about during this period just sounds like the most dangerous set to be on. Yeah, and then like it's it's it was a couple things away from being on curse the curse film series. Like. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, filmmaking as we learned from curse films on Shutter was pretty much just the Wild West until a literal helicopter got dropped on some kids. Yeah, well, then most recently, just Alec Baldwin shooting a person. Yeah, with blanks, which just happened a couple yeah. of times on movies. So just oh, it's just yeah. Overall going back and re revisiting this i really like this movie a lot more than i thought i was going to I, I i remember liking it but being able to appreciate it more as i as an adult it's just a great movie and it definitely holds up and really holds its place in like the horror hall of fame yeah well entertainment weekly voted this is the second scariest film ever made behind the exorcist so before we talk about it, Gavin, I didn't ask you last week uh, with Dawn of the Dead. Is Dawn of the Dead to you a scary movie? And would you say is one of the scariest movies? I think it's a scary movie. I don't think it's one of the scariest, though. I I, I agree. Yeah, I think but, it's more. I I think it's scary, but I also think it's really fun. I, I think yeah. Dawn of the Dead is very fun. I mean, there's a pie fight. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Would you say it's uh, in the in the top ten, top five of scariest movies ever? Top ten, yes. 
Yeah. Um, and uh, we got we got to talk about kills. Well, I know we already touched it, but we didn't say officially. What are what are your favorite kills? Favorite kill, probably Franklin, because he comes okay. out of nowhere. It's just kind of is like, what's that over there? And then he's just yeah. ch- chainsaw, and he had it coming. He's yeah. a very sad character, but he's also very annoying. So I feel like he's more annoying than sad. So mm-hmm. carving him up was a okay. Mine is Kirk. Just bam hits the ground which in- and and also that was uh my oh shit moment those those two moments of kirk getting it and then also her uh running out of the house and getting grabbed like you're like oh she almost I, got away those were my oh shit moments i think my oh shit moment is jerry investigating the house and then just pam popping out of the freezer <laughs> because mm-hmm. you're like oh shit what is she alive is she dead yeah what is she gonna freeze to death what, what's going on well, if Grandpa can be alive, she's alive for sure. Yeah, she is definitely alive. So, um, yeah. If you enjoy Texas, if you enjoy Texas Chainsaw Massacre, what movies would you recommend? Well, I think uh, you would have to say the 2003 remake. I think it was 2003. I the, like that remake a lot. I think it's really good, and I think if somebody said that one is better than this, I could say okay. They're different. I, I, There's different qualities to both. But I, I mean, I, I would rewatch better. 2003 before this one. This one yeah. is this is not a movie that you just throw on, at least for me. <laughs> That's background, background noise. Yeah, this is. <laughs> yeah, uh, but the, the 2003 remake for sure. Yeah, I like two 2003 a lot. Um, X that came out this year. I haven't seen it, but I heard it. Heard X is it. so good. It is Ty West, what he does with this film. Um, it, it's an A24 movie. It's just called X, the letter X. Mm-hmm. Um, it is Texas Chainsaw Massacre for a new generation. It's not so much the, the, the story of it, but the way it's shot. Very hot, sweaty, gross. A lot sexier, though. The movie is a lot sexier. I'm in. Uh, yeah. Uh, if, if you like titties it has them in pairs oh so. shit. that's my oh shit moment for this <laughs> so x is definitely one i'd recommend um i think also probably like i mean if you want to go into that 70s exploitation style like last house on the left I i've not I, seen I, that and i just i heard there was just it's not it's not like a movie that you leave feeling okay or you feel bad, feeling you feel not real, dirty, and that's why I've not bad. watched it. Yeah, I I will eventually. Yeah, I would say uh, Hills Have Eyes, the original. That's, that's another yeah, one that I haven't seen. That that's okay. One I haven't seen. So, but yeah, um, and then I, for we, sure we can't not talk about Texas Chainsaw Massacre without talking about who Gavin. Uh, I don't know who who who, who am I not talking about? Uh, Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie. What is Rob Zombie about? Oh, <laughs> just his movies. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I did write. Okay. Rob Zombie, Devil's Rejects, especially the Devil's Rejects. House if of a Thousand lo- Corpses. I even, I, you know, I wouldn't even recommend House of a Thousand Cor- Corpses uh, as much as I would recommend the Devil's Reject. I would do uh, both. You would but, do both. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, Otis is wearing a, a face. A, somebody's face for he is. you know like yeah and if you if you if you're the kind of person that's like Texas Chainsaw Massacre did, didn't go far enough and you want to go farther Devil's Rejects is your movie yeah and I, I still have no idea that movie got two thumbs up by Siskel and Roper I our, our, that's e- I think the Roper. best Rob Zombie movie is the Devil's Rejects I think it's his best original work I still like the Halloween remake mm-hmm. but yeah Rob Zombie that definitely has that sweaty gross style yeah, that, that applies. So Devil's Rejects for sure, and it's like it's got it's got Chop Top in it. So I don't know what else you want. Yeah, yeah, so, he's yeah. not playing Chop Top, of course, but yeah. uh, and maybe Tex TCM two. Just know that it's not the, it's not going to be like the first one. Uh, and it's yeah, it's a completely different movie from the first. We we Tex should Chainsaw do Massacre once we get get through these first episodes and kind of go. We should talk about sequels that had like a drastic departure from yeah. like from, from like the previous because Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is a huge weird departure yeah like a huge departure but yeah I think X Devil's Rejects TCM 2003 I think if you enjoyed TCM 
74 mm-hmm. you will enjoy all of those and i could say you know halloween i th- i think for franchises halloween may be one of the ones where there's a a couple of duds in there like maybe people would say halloween is not the best franchise but i think even worse than halloween which that's my favorite franchise by the way mm-hmm. is that one Text Chainsaw Massacre is the maybe the worst franchise. Yeah, because you have a couple good standouts, and yeah. then when they're bad, they are bad, and yeah. they are just not good, not not good. And they're still making them. Like I, I yeah. read right about today that like Netflix is two ready more. for right ready ready for two more. I so, li- I like the new one, but again, I I just think it's fun. Yeah, I mean they're all like seventy minutes, so it's like this is like uh a long episode of an HBO show. Yeah, this I'm going to I'm going to waste that time anyway. So um I think we've said everything that needs to be said. This is you the know, definitive I, podcast. Yeah. The, the, this is the definitive podcast. You talked about you you said some secondhand information from an audio commentary, which is perfect. Interview the real real people? Absolutely not. Hearsay all the way. And yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, th- this is it. No more. You are not legally allowed to do a Texas Chainsaw Massacre podcast after hearing this. You're you're not. This is it. We, we did it. you all the information. We went to IMDb. <clears throat> I told you a story about when I watched it for the first time. And uh, we had some laughs along the way. Yeah, there was laughs with this movie. How could you not laugh at this brutality? <laughs> so there you go. Well, uh, Gavin uh this has been this has been it yeah we are we're done texas chainsaw massacre and, and, and never forget they're coming to get you barbara Brain. <laughs> they're coming to get you they're coming for you barbara they're coming to get you